when are you and I desperate enough to seek after the blessing of God? And, and that sounds like a strange combination of words, doesn't it? Desperate enough to, to seek the blessing of God. But the truth of the matter is, if we really understood our situation and how we're supposed to live for Jesus, that desperation for Jesus should be there on a daily basis. I wish it were for me. It isn't always so. But we can learn something from Jacob today in a, in a passage of Scripture that many of us have seen uh, many times before and hopefully in a new light today day as we study it together. Hi, I'm Pastor Jeremy Bannister of Heights Christian Church, and we're going through the Bible in five years period of time. If it's always been a goal of yours to go through the Word of God, we invite you on this journey with us by clicking subscribe to our channel and the bell for notifications. You're going to receive a devotional much like this one. We'll read just a little bit of the scripture together and pull one thing from it to help us be more like Jesus. So let's find out together as we read our passage today of Scripture just how desperate Jacob is for God's blessing concerning his situation. The same night he arose and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his eleven children and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream and everything else that he had, and Jacob was left alone. And a man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he touched his hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, Let me go, for the day has broken. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. And he said to him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. And then he said, Your name shall no longer be Jacob, but Israel. For you have striven with God and with men and have prevailed. Then Jacob said to him, asked him, please tell me your name. But he said, why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the name of the place Peniel for saying, saying, for I have seen God face to face and yet my life has been delivered. The sun rose upon him as he passed Penuel lim limping because of his hip. Therefore, to this day, the people of Israel do not eat the sinew of the thigh that is on the hip socket, because he touched the socket of Jacob's hip on the sinew of the thigh. And so, you know, there's a couple of things in this passage of Scripture that, I don't know, just, just always have uh, perplexed me. And, and some of it's right there in the script that we don't recognize when we read the whole thing in context. This wrestling with the angel, how did this come to be? Well, if you'll remember from yesterday's devotional at the very beginning of the chapter, a, a little detail that maybe you've looked over like myself, this is what it says. Jacob went on his way and the angels of God met him. And when Jacob saw them, he said, this is God's camp. So he called the name of that place Mahanaim. And so what's so funny is that right there at the very beginning of this chapter, we know that he's in the camp of God. All of this that takes place in chapter 32 is in the camp of God. The angels are there. He wrestles with angels who are there. In other words, they didn't magically appear and he's wrestling with this angel. He is in the camp of God. And, and there we see a, if you will, pre-incarnate Christ wrestling with Jacob you know, uh, that we're looking at the angel of the Lord because he says, I've seen God face to face. And of course, we see Jesus as this figure uh, hum of humanity that is fully God, fully man. And we sometimes see this pre-incarnate form of Christ. We see him walking, the voice of God walking in the garden. And here we see him wrestling with Jacob. And Jacob is wanting the blessing of God. And of course, he's, he's hobbled from this wrestling all night, and he gives him a new name, you know. And this new name, Israel, from Jacob, Jacob, which meant deceiver, which is what we have seen in his life. And now we see Israel striven with God, that he strives with God or he strives against God. In other words, he is, he is fighting for that blessing of God. And so, how far would you and I go for that blessing of God? If we really understood the desperation of our situation, we would seek after it every single day. And the truth of the matter is, sometimes as Christians, we don't recognize how desperate our situation is. We think things are just going fine. And we give no second thought to 
Christ and the mission that he's given us to make disciples and what it means to live for Jesus on a daily basis. I wish I were better at it. I really do. Um, and I'm reminded of these words in Matthew chapter 24 when Jesus starts talking about the end of times. And the end of times happens in two ways. Number one, you know, as we're going to look at Matthew 24, he's talking about when Jesus is coming back, right? When he's going to come back and, and all things are made new. But the other way that time ends for us, at least here on earth, is when you and I die. And in both of those cases, the one thing we don't know is when that's going to happen. So you and I need to be desperately living for Jesus and, and the blessing that comes for living for Christ on a daily basis because we don't know when our day is done or those around us as well. And I know that we want to talk to them about Jesus because in Christ is the blessing of God. Let's take a look at this passage just to remind us of the mission that we're supposed to be on and how we're supposed to live for Jesus and seek out this blessing much like Jacob does. Jesus is talking, he says, but concerning that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but the Father only. For as were the days of Noah, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days, before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day when Noah entered the ark. And they were unaware until the flood came and swept them all away. So will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two men will be in a field. One will be taken and one left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and one left. Therefore, stay awake, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you must also be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Who then is the faithful and wise servant whom his master has set over his household to give them their food at the proper time? Blessed is that servant whom his master will find doing so when he comes. Truly I say to you, he will set him over all his possessions. But if that wicked servant says to himself, My master is delayed, and begins to beat his fellow servants, and eats and drinks with drunkards, the master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him, and in an hour he does not know, and will cut him in pieces and put him with the hypocrites. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. You know, we, we have a, an obligation as believers in Christ to desperately seek after the blessing of God for ourselves and for others. That's found in Jesus. We want to tell them about eternal life found in Christ. That's the, the role of the Great Commission. But you and I, we're very distracted. You know, we're distracted people living a land of blessing, and we think we have plenty of time. I, I do. I, I act that way all the time. I wish I didn't. And I need to be reminded through the reading of the scripture that someday, whatever day it's going to be that God either calls me home or, or he comes back, time is up. And there should be a desperation for seeking that blessing of God for those around us who do, do not yet know Jesus Christ. I pray that this kind of reinvigorates us in our mission because Jacob is seeking the blessing of God amidst a pressure that his, something might happen to him as of tomorrow. You know, for you and I, we don't know the day or hour that Jesus is coming back or we're coming to him. May we seek God's blessing in that same desperation and so change the course of our lives as Jacob's course was changed when God blessed him and changed his name from that of a deceiver to one who strives with God. May you strive with God today and take others with you as you're striving to follow him with all of your heart, mind, soul, and strength. I pray that helps you today as well as it helps me. God bless you. We'll talk with you again tomorrow.